Quick thanks to Kinguin for sponsoring this video. A lot of people are talking about Prey, the new game coming out of Arcane Studios, the studio that brought us the Dishonored series, but not many people know much about it, at least in any sort of specificity. They know that it's a first person shooter, that it has some cool mechanics and these weird mimic-like alien creatures, but they can't tell you where it's set what it's about. So I figured I would put together this video and explain where it's set, who you're playing as, some of the core mechanics and how the narrative functions. And you can take that and apply it to your purchasing decisions to figure out if it's a game that you want to try, uh, if you wanna pick it up and give it a shot. So with all that said, let's just jump right into it. Now the setting of Prey is a little bit convoluted. Uh, this mainly is because the game Prey was initially announced as a game about a bounty hunter in this alien universe. And it, since that game was canceled, because it wasn't meeting Bethesda Softworks publishing standards, it has taken on a life of its own, and Prey, as it will be released in early May of 2017, is very, very different from that initial vision for the series. So the new setting, which borrows partially from the original game, is uh, go it goes like this pra basically the game takes place in an alternate universe a universe where john f kennedy jfk survived the uh, the 1963 assassination attempt in dallas so uh, after he survived this assassination attempt in this alternate universe he put more money into the space program, specifically NASA, and they started developing all of these, these cool space innovations, such as satellites way ahead of when they initially were invented in our timeline that we know of right now. So as a result of that, humans across the globe became much more involved in space, especially Russia and the US. And as a result of this, an alien species decided to come and check out humanity, come check out Earth, and they decided to attack Earth, because what else are you going to do? Now, the United States and the USSR actually decided to work together to fight off this alien race, this alien species, and they were pretty much successful. Uh, they decided to build this space station called Talos-1 in orbit of Earth's moon in order to store, essentially act as a prison for this alien race because they didn't want to destroy it outright because these alien creatures had some abilities that the uh, that the Americans and the Russians felt like they could use or apply or learn from and do something with. And so they decided very intelligently, as I'm sure you are guessing, to uh, hold these creatures on this space station. Now, this space station is, of course, the setting of the game, Talos 1. You're in this space station. Now, the cool thing about the station is that the game world has been built over time. Talos 1 was not built in one go. It was built over decades and decades and decades by multiple different uh, groups and agencies and factions and countries. So, you have whole sections of the station that are going to be in different styles, such as retrofuturism is one that they have referenced uh, specifically, uh, they being the developers of the game. In other words, it's going to look like the Jetsons in certain areas, and then other portions are going to look very Art Deco. Other areas are going to be uh, basically an uncanny resemblance to uh, the Bioshock series. All of these things are going to be within the space station, which is uh, a very cool coinky dink with uh, their current setting. So the setting, Talos 1, alternate universe, you're on a space station with a bunch of crazy aliens, and those aliens are something we will reference specifically once we get into the gameplay a little more in a few minutes, but as of right now, that essentially explains the primary setting of the game. Now I'll leave the setting there because I don't want to get into any sort of spoilers beyond that. If you've watched the first hour of the game, then you know roughly what goes on. Essentially, you play as this prisoner, essentially, of, of an experiment, and you're trying to escape. And then before long, you try to escape the space station. And I'm sure once we get the game, we will learn that there's a lot more going on than simply experiments. But with that said, I'll avoid spoilers and won't go any further. So let's just jump right into the gameplay. 
As you can see on screen, the game is a first-person shooter, which gives you a wide variety of weapons and tools to choose from. Everything from typical guns to shock little blaster things to glue guns, which hold enemies down. And in the words of the developer of the game, uh, specifically a couple of the creative directors from Arcane, they said that their fighting mechanics in this game are built around the aliens themselves, which take on a variety of forms from little mimics who procedurally uh, and systematically and based on a simulation can go and mimic physical items in the environment. A good example of this it was a, a gameplay demonstration I saw where they were playing through the game and it's different every time because it's all simulated. So a mimic uh, was in a particular room. The gameplay uh, or the developer took the player character into that room. The mimic scurried off and it was gone, you couldn't see it. And then you looked to the left and you saw that there were uh, three shoes, one left shoe and two right shoes on the floor. And that, if you've played Prey, should stand out to you because that means that one of those shoes is a mimic because no one has three shoes. So you, if you were paying attention, then you would focus on that and you would attack it and sure enough, it was a mimic which is something that is not scripted. It's different every single time you play because if the Mimic were over by the towel rack, the Mimic would uh, become a towel on that rack or become the rack itself and there would just be two towel racks there. So it trains you to keep aware of your surroundings. Other aliens that you could focus on, um, which I won't get into too much because they haven't unveiled very much and it would get into spoiler areas, but other aliens offer a wide variety of abilities and dangerous attributes uh, that you need to deal with specifically and in a case-by-case -case, uh, scenario. So with that in mind, the gameplay was developed to deal with those in two basic steps, to neutralize those threats and then to kill them, to eliminate them. In other words, the glue gun is a great example. So you have a glue gun. If you see a mimic, you freeze the mimic with your glue gun, then you hit it with a wrench to kill it. So you neutralized it and then you eliminated it. That's how most of the combat is going to work, or at least that's what they're explaining it as right now. Fairly straightforward, and I'm sure it will get much more complicated as the game goes on, but as of right now, now that's how they are explaining it. Now another element of gameplay besides combat is the idea of player freedom. And this is something that they've talked a fair bit about. Now they haven't said anything specifically about the endings to the game. They have said that there are multiple different endings. Uh, as one developer even said there are many. Now as to whether or not that means that there are many different significant endings or if it's just a bunch of different little tweaks to the final cutscene. We don't really know. I'd assume it's the latter, but at the very least, your decisions have an impact, which is cool. Um, and it's something that hasn't been seen very much this year at the very least. So I'm excited about that. But going back to the player freedom aspect of the game, this goes all the way down to something as simple as opening a doorway. If you come across a door, there's a few ways to get past it. You can find the key card to open it up or you can look around, you can find a vent to crawl through, or you can find a mimic and use, there's all sorts of different ways to take on one of these challenges, which is really, really interesting uh, because again, branching options is something that a lot of people tout as a feature of their game, but rarely is it employed to its fullest extent. And they, at least at this point, claim that it's consistent throughout the game, that there's many, many branching and different ways to do uh, things throughout this game. And at the very least, we can take them on their word uh, as of right now. And if they end up having lied, then <laughs> we will crucify them accordingly. But as of right now, it seems like they're really focusing on player freedom in the levels as you go through no matter what you're doing now this leaks into the idea of the open world or at least sort of you are of course on a space station orbiting earth's moon so you are a little limited in your uh, total uh, sort of perusing or perusal <laughs> you uh, have to follow a set path at least to some extent but Apparently, the entire station is open to you. You can go wherever you want in the station. 
Um, but certain of areas will, of course, be blocked off based on certain abilities, certain enemy types that you will need to learn to be able to handle, which is, of course, understandable and to be expected of any game. But I would expect them to follow the inspiration of games such as Dishonored, which, of course, should come as no surprise. Arcane Studios, the developer, is uh, the same developer that brought us Dishonored, but also uh, System Shock, which they've referenced many times in the developer interviews leading up to the release of the game as an inspiration for uh, Prey as a game, specifically in the branching type of uh, creative solutions, as they put it, to vast uh, swaths of problems. The open world, quote unquote, is sort of a feature, but it's not the focus. If you want, technically, you can go where you want to, but if you want to enjoy the game or play the game the way it was meant to, you will be following at least somewhat of a narrative and linear path, which I have no problem with, and I don't think you should either. It's perfectly understandable, and it's something that really uh, should be expected in this type of game. But I think I'm going to stop the discussion there. If I go any further, I'm going to start leeching into spoiler territory, and I want to avoid that, especially if you're interested in this game. I can say confidently that having looked into this game, I am very interested, very intrigued, and I hope that I explained all of this in a way that did that for you as well. But before you go, again, quick thanks to Kingwin for sponsoring this video. As a broke college student, I need a break in my wallet department anywhere I can get it. And Kingwin helps me to be able to affordably uh, manage and continue this gaming addiction I have. So thank you to Kingwin. I've been consistently wildly impressed uh, with their customer service, with how they deal with their customers. They follow all international guidelines in their industry they go above and beyond truly and if you're interested in checking them out you can uh, follow the link down in the description below and you can even use my coupon code to get a further discount on their already crazy low prices but thank you to kingwin thank you to you for watching i love you all see you in the next video